In this lecture, we're going to cover the muscles of the lower limb. Muscles of the gluteal region that move the femur. Lower limb muscles function in stability, locomotion, and maintenance of posture. In contrast, upper limb muscles are characterized by versatility of movement. Muscles of the lower limb often cross two joints and connect equally on both. Most muscles that move the femur originate on the pelvic girdle and insert on the femur. The major muscle groups that move the thigh include the gluteals and adductor muscles. And in this picture, we see the gluteus maximus, and it's going to extend, abduct, and laterally rotate the thigh. The gluteus medius is going to also adduct the thigh, as well as over here, if we dissect below the gluteus maximus and the gluteus medius, dissect those out of the way, we see the gluteus minimus that also adducts the thigh. And down here we can see the obturator internus that helps to laterally rotate the thigh. And over to the left, again, we can see the gluteus medius and the gluteus maximus. And then this one here, which is the tensor fascia latte. And uh, so I dare you, the next time you go to Starbucks or wherever you get your coffee, order um, maybe a tensor fascia latte grande. Um, make that decaf, a couple of Splenda. No? Ooh, I could go for one of those right now. But anyway, the tensor fascia lata, what it does is it uh, laterally rotates the thigh. And you can see it's attached to this structure, the iliotibial tract, also called the iliotibial band. Now, this is pretty tough connective tissue. And I know sometimes runners have problems with their IT band. Um, it's hard to do much with it uh, because of it being connective tissue, but oftentimes it's the tensor fascia lata that is actually um, tight or spasmed. And when that's stretched, that can help relieve some of the uh, tension on the IT band. Now, here's some external hip rotators. We have the piriformis, which abducts the thigh. We have the superior gemellus that laterally rotates the thigh. The obturator internus also laterally rotates the thigh. The inferior gemellus laterally rotates the thigh. Up here, we have some hip flexors, and this is the psoas major. It's going to flex the thigh. The iliacus muscle flexes the thigh. And together, um, when they uh, go underneath the inguinal ligament here, they become known as the iliopsoas. And here's the sartorius muscle. The sartorius flexes and rotates laterally the thigh and the leg. So this is the muscle that's going to help you cross your leg. Down here we have the thigh adductors. We have the adductor longus which adducts the thigh. The pectineus muscle which also adducts the thigh. The adductor brevis. Again it's an adductor of the thigh. And the adductor magnus which is a pretty big muscle if we dissect away the adductor brevis and adductor longus, we'll see that the adductor magnus, very large, again, that's going to adduct the thigh. And so we're going to go back over to the external hip rotators. And um, I'm going to help you try to memorize these. I'm going to give you a little story that should help. And the first one, the first muscle, is the piriformis. Now form means shape. And so this is pyramid shaped, kind of like that. Okay, and then the next ones, we have the superior gemellus 
and then we skip one and we have the inferior gemellus. Now I want you to think about um, the zodiac signs. What zodiac sign sounds like gemellus? Right, Gemini. And Gemini is what? Gemini is the twins. Well, gemellus also means twins. So we have the superior gemellus. So that's our one twin. And then down here we have the inferior gemellus. That's our other twin. Now, superior gemellus is hanging out by the pyramid and she's trying to call her sister. She's not having very much luck, so she's going to call the operator. I mean operator. So this is the operator. Now she's not a full-fledged operator yet. She's still an intern. Ooh, so that's our operator internus. So again, we've got um, superior gemellus calling the operator and saying, operator, I was wondering if you can connect me to my sister. And she gets her sister and her sister is like, Hello, Superior Gemellus, where are you? And she's like, I'm hanging out by the pyramid. Well, where are you? And Inferior Gemellus says, well, I'm hanging out by the quad. Ooh, look, Quadratus Fomoris. So here's our Quadratus Fomoris. So we have the pyramid. We have Superior Gemellus hanging out by the pyramid, who just called the operator, no, not operator, opterator internus who connected her to inferior gemellus, who is hanging out on the quad, quadratus femoris. I hope this helped. Muscles of the thigh. Deep fascia separates muscles that act on the femur and the tibia and fibula into medial, anterior, and posterior compartments. The medial adductor compartment of the thigh adducts the femur at the hip joint. Anterior extensor compartment of the thigh extends the leg and flexes the thigh. The posterior flexor compartment of the thigh flex the leg and extend the thigh. Now here's the rectus femoris and that flexes the thigh and extends the leg. Here's the vastus lateralis which extends the leg, and the vastus medialis, which also extends the leg. Now, these make up the quadratus femoris. And quad, of course, means four. Well, wait a second. I only showed you three muscles. Vastus medialis, rectus femoris, vastus lateralis. Where's the fourth muscle? Well, if we cut the rectus femoris and move it out of the way, Underneath, as you can see in this cross-sectional view, we're going to see the vastus intermedius. And that's going to give us our four muscles that make up the quadriceps muscles. And then here's a good picture, too, of the sartorius. Again, that flexes and rotates laterally the thigh and the leg, and that helps you to cross your leg. Matter of fact, sartorius comes from the word, I think it's sartore, which means tailor. And back in the old days, when these names came about, they didn't have sewing machines. All sewing was done by hand, and tailors would sit with their legs crossed, and um, they would drape uh, the, the fabric over their knee and um, sew it that way. And so the sartorius is known as the tailor's muscle. And here we have the hamstrings. The hamstrings are going to be made up of the biceps femoris. And the long head extends the thigh and flexes the leg. The short head is going to flex the leg. And then we have the semitendinosus, which extends the thigh, flexes the leg. And semimembranosus extends the thigh and flexes the leg. And you want to memorize these from medial to lateral. Um, first is, again, the bicep femoris, right here. And then we have semitendinosus and semimembranosus, or Ted and Mary. And the way I remember these are, I think of Ted and Mary drive a semi-truck. Okay, so they're a team. And when they 
pull up at a truck stop. Um, Ted and Mary hop out of the truck. Ted gets up on top of the truck and uh, he's checking all the hoses and checking lights and everything. And um, Mary gets down kind of under the truck and she's checking tires to make sure tires are properly inflated and none are flat. So I think of Ted is up above the truck, up above the truck. So she's up, he's above Mary. So Mary is underneath the truck. So Ted over Mary. So semitendinosis is going to sit over semimembranosis. Muscles of the leg that move the foot and toes. Leg muscles, like those of the thigh, are divided by deep fascia into three compartments, anterior, lateral, and posterior. The anterior compartment are muscles that dorsiflex the foot. In other words, if you, at the ankle, bend your foot up and point your toes up, that's dorsiflexion. The lateral compartment muscles plantar flex and evert the foot. What that means is plantar flexion is, again, bending at the ankle and pointing your toes down. To evert the foot, that would be like turning your foot laterally to look at the lateral edge of your foot. And the posterior compartment muscles are split between superficial, such as the gastrocnemius, your calf muscle, and deep, such as the tibialis posterior groups. The superficial muscles share a common tendon of insertion, the calcaneal tendon, also known as the Achilles tendon. And so we can see the gastrocnemius. Again, that flexes the leg and plantar flexes the foot. The soleus also plantar flexes the foot. And this one is the uh, plantaris muscle. And just as you expect from the name, it's going to plantar flex the foot. Now this is a pretty small muscle and its tendon is pretty long and I remember in grad school they called this the freshman nerve because you'd be dissecting uh, the uh, calf muscles and you would find this long skinny tendon that appeared to be a nerve and of course you spent all your time trying to figure out what nerve that is. So it was no nerve at all, it was actually the tendon of the plantaris muscle. And then we have the popliteus muscle, and that's going to flex the leg. What the, plant, the popliteus muscle actually does is when you are standing with your knees locked, you have to unlock the knee in order to take a step. And that's what the popliteus does. Think about it popping the knee forward to allow you to bend your knee to take a step. And if this muscle gets damaged, um, the patient oftentimes will have to hike the hip up a bit to take the pressure off the knee to allow the knee to bend. And this way they can bend their knee then and put it forward to take the next step. So again, think of the popliteus as popping the knee forward to unlock it so that you can take a step. And then on this slide, we have the... Um, Fibularis tertius, which is not showing up actually on this slide, but it dorsiflex um, the foot. And another name for fibularis is peroneus. So we could call it the peroneus tertius, uh, peroneus longus, or peroneus brevis, or we can call it fibularis tertius, fibularis longus, and fibularis brevis. Now here we do have the fibularis longus. That's going to evert and plantar flex the foot. And then the fibularis or peroneus brevis everts the foot. And then we have the tibialis anterior, which is going to dorsiflex and invert the foot. And on this view, we can see the flexor hallucis longus 
And remember, hallucis refers to your big toe. So the flexor hallucis longus plantar flexes um, the foot, and it also flexes the toe, the big toe. And then the tibialis posterior, plantar flexes the foot. And then the flexor digitorum longus, plantar flexes uh, the foot and also flexes the digits or toes.